Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to the bear market. Welcome back to the bear market builders podcast. This is a podcast where we bring on people and projects who are actually doing something in this bear market and not, you know, just giving up uh, and actually doing stuff. So today we're here with the coders. We're here with VPIP and Jazz. Um, hi, guys. How are you? So, Hi, we're good. How are you? It's good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Happy Saturday, everyone. Um, Saturday. Man. Saturday. Yeah, it's crazy. Started off my Saturday with basketball and then, uh, then just chilled pretty much. And now closing it out with a podcast. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, nice. So, can you give us a little bit of background on who you guys are as people? Sure. Jazz, you go first. Sure. Um, so my name is Jazz. Um, I'm a retired musician. I'm a crypto investor uh, that got into NFTs uh, coming out of last year's, uh, well, last cycle's bull run. Uh, kind of got bored, so I started looking around in NFTs and got in. Uh, and still here. Got into Solana communities, really loved it. Started working with a lot of teams and uh, helped uh, launch some projects and decided to get together with the crew and Launched Decoders uh, last year, and uh, still here trying to build something positive for the space. Love it. Love it. VPIF? Um, so I'm VPIF. VPIF me. Um, I uh, have been in the film business for 30-ish years. Um, came into the space 2021, I guess. Um, yeah, so I, I got here a little late. Um, just in time for the <laughs> downward spiral, <laughs> the bear market. But um, I got here a little late, but um, I really, I come from a stock investment background um, and alternative investments. I'm in wine, I'm in a bunch of different things, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Um, so I've tried everything out and um, decided that NFTs weren't going anywhere, so I better get in while I, you know, now and not think about it for five years and wish that I had. So I got in and I've learned a lot, been rugged a lot, you know, mm. the huge. Yeah. Um, but since I got in the space, I've become a Twitter Spaces host. Um, I have a, uh, I have a space, Solana Side Up, that I run two days a week. Um, and yeah, I joined Decoders last year and we've been building ever since. Love it. I don't know why the kick title didn't update, but uh, that's great. It's okay. Now we're good. But uh, what's up, Brody? What's up, Pi? Hope you guys are doing good. Um, so you guys pretty you know you guys knocked out the second question. That was just how you know how do you guys find Web three? But uh, um, what can you give me a little bit of background on what Decoders is as well? <clears throat> sure. Um, so Decoders was a project that was envisioned by our dev, uh, Vince. Um, he came to us in a group chat. We all were working on another project, uh, kind of pitched the idea to us. Uh, we started working on the idea, uh, ended up opening the Discord, and we opened the Discord, brought in some close friends, and kind of like, you know, hammered out the ideas. Uh, it's pretty much based around a YouTube channel where we are a decentralized YouTube channel. Uh, where we're doing a watch to earn meta, um, where we have a player, people watch videos and they make uh, our token or SPL token while enjoying the content of, and the value of the content. So we were able to launch that. Um, we had, this was last year. We opened the Discord, uh, I think in January public, uh, and we started doing the videos. We launched the player soon after, and the proof of work has been working well uh, for the last year, and we're about to go into Mint now. Um, if you have any more technical questions, I'm sure I can answer, but that's pretty much a summary of like how we came about and, you know, a basic summary. V, you got anything you want to add into that? Mm -mm. You covered it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like I've, man, I've known of you guys for a minute now. Like, I feel like I've, I was pretty yeah, early. You've I feel been like in since, I, yeah, I, I you've was, been in since the very beginning. I wasn't one of the first, it's... but I was pretty close. Um, yeah. Vince equals go. I agree, Brody. I agree. Um, yeah, you came in in February, a month after we opened public. So you were early. That's, crazy. That's early. That's crazy. We didn't get our first. We didn't get our first boost of traction until like mid March. 
that's when we like started growing and getting some really good traction. So yeah, no, Carter's an OG. He's been in there, yeah. Yeah, that's very right. Close to the that's beginning, right. I remember. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of like how I like found you guys. I don't really know. Maybe it was through jazz, through maybe probably maybe through, through jelly. Rascals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely through jelly. I'm sure. But yeah, we're early. Um, we're now you know close to mint. We have some views to spend. Um, but yeah, like, do you know what? Man, I'm really lost right now. But where? Not what inspired the project, but like, I mean, what inspired you guys to make content? That's probably a better question to ask. Yeah, I'll let you take that oh, first. Shoot. Oh shoot! Um, <laughs> I just fell into it. Because if you ask Jazz, I was most unlikely to be a, sp a Spaces host. And um, definitely unlikely to be on YT this year. Um, but, you know, um, in terms of the project, that's what it entails. And I was already doing Spaces hosting and really enjoying it. So hopped on YT. I said, I said to Vittler, I'll try it out a couple times and we'll see. And now I'm like his regular co-host and hosting my own content and what I find important about that is like you know it's threads are great reading things on the internet is great but there's a certain amount of learning that um you know con and connection that you have with your audience with having these live videos and 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 putting faces to names and we don't always we don't you know, if people don't want to dox, they don't have to. But even just having somebody there live, you, you know, like especially as, yeah, especially with the founder interviews, um, it's really great to get in depth with those founders and like really see what they're made of and see how they ask answer the, the questions and like you know, there's certain projects that I wouldn't, I never in a million years was considering getting into that I found myself. Uh, when Vittler was hosting, like, looking up on Magic Eden, Eden and seeing if, like, I had a chance of getting it. <laughs> like, I remember Catalina Whales. I was like, what the hell is Catalina Whales? Those whales are kind of ugly. <laughs> I was not whales. interested at all. But then we had the founder on, and I got really bullish on him and was looking it up. And then I saw the floor price, and I was like, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but that that sort of thing happens as well as, you know, people drop early alpha in some of our videos, which is really cool. So, you know, you get a you get a leg up on the competition in terms of what a project's doing and where they're going. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's really um, important. And it's also very important for the space because, you know, it, and it's good to build it in the bear market because... I mean, I just saw a touch of what it was like in the bull, right? And it's just people going into shell spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Glossing over everything. And to have these in-depth founder interviews, um, you know, I think people are going to demand more of the next round of founders, you know, when they go into these spaces. Because before, you, you wouldn't find out a lot about a project, but for some reason people would be hype yeah yeah i feel like just anyone wanted to spend money you know anything could make money really um and i like what brody said that he no longer trusts founders that aren't doxxed which is pretty funny it's crazy because i've been friends with fox for a while and i know you guys just had fox on i never thought he would look like that but <laughs> i love fox yeah that's yeah, it's the thing. Like you, you, you hear people and you, you relate to them as a PFP, and then when you first see them, you're just like, "Wait, what?" Me, literally <laughs> me. If I, I swear, but if I wouldn't there, like say I was 14, there's no one that would think. Yeah. Like, it's funny. There's also the converse where the other night when I, um, I've been friends with June Bass, Like he was, he was an OG, um, Solana Side Up supporter. I've been friends with him forever, and he came on, and I was like, that's exactly how I thought you would look. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It was, like, amazing. But, yeah, I, I personally don't have a problem with uh, founders not doxing, but I do have, I do want to know about them. I want to get into their world. I don't need them to dox to do that. But I don't, I personally don't have a problem because I, 
firsthand watched a couple of founders get threatened or, or like people know where their family lived or something and start yeah. threatening their family for one mishap, it, you know, that happened in the project, which is going to happen. So for me, I mean, nothing we're doing here is worth somebody losing their life over or, you know, having their family threatened over. So I'm still okay with founders not doxing. What I'm not okay with is them not being transparent. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say, Jess, uh, I have the shades on now. Uh, we're matching. See. We're matching. I see, I see. Um, yeah, yeah. So That's Jess, all Bittler, man. He started it, and I was just like, I know, you know what? I feel like I was just thinking about it, and I was like, oh, you I know I tried what? it. I, I didn't love it. Well, um, you know, I do have a, a crazy setup, so I have a lot of lights in my face, and I have very sensitive eyes, so it actually helps me. Yeah. When I'm yep. like, live. Blue light glasses. I have, a, I have a light over here, and I have a couple monitors in front of me, so... Uh, it just makes it easier on my eyes. Yeah, you have blue light glasses. I have, a, I have, a, I have like literally a spotlight on me right now. Yeah, well. <laughs> but and this is where I started filming in January, and yeah, I I mean I tried it a couple of times. I just didn't hear. Like I've been all around you. the world, streaming everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we Meanwhile, go. I just I just been down in Florida chilling. <laughs> Every time yeah. we're on stream. I've been in what four time zones in the last two two and a half weeks. Jess? That's crazy. Oh, buddy. Come hang out with us and watch Carter on Twitch. Not unless I'm getting views for it in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say that? Yeah. He just fucked around, though. He's no, you know who that is? It's Dropbox, isn't it? No, it's not. Uh, it's that's... the beauty of our... But that's the beauty of our project. Like, we've conditioned people. They, they don't want to watch us unless they can earn. And that's the proof of work. Like, you, you reward people and synthesize them, and they, like, will come and watch your content. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. They're getting something out of it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, like, yeah, uh, it's it's good to reward people, you know, and it gets you guys views too. Like it, it's like a win win for both. You know. People. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, so, uh, I mean, it... go ahead. Go good. Ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say the experiment has worked so well, so we're we've been doing well with it. So, Jess, how did you get into? Oh, hold on. I'll let you. I'll let you take a sip of your coffee. I I, I hate. Nah, it's it's tea. It's tea. It's a coffee yeah, a cup. Coffee cup. It, it's, what? It's, well, it says it just says coffee on it, but I, it doesn't mean I have to drink coffee out of it. Oh, I don't it's think so. My coffee. Listen, when I'm drinking coffee, you know I'm drinking coffee. Usually, when I drink coffee, it's in a big cup. <laughs> you just take one of like the whole like the pots that like it gets put into. Yeah, yeah, the whole pot. <laughs> yeah, just drink just, it out of the pot. I get it. So how did I get into content creation? So I'm, a, like I said, a musician. So I've been on stage. I've played in front of crowds. I've, I've toured professionally. So being in front of people is not a big deal for me. Um, when I got into, you know, semi, I'm not going to be doing music anymore, and I'm just going to chill. I started streaming. I was a gamer. I did competitive gaming and stuff like that, where I was playing different games for money, competitions, streaming. You know, I had, you know, I had my own Twitch at one time. I was a partner on Mixer when they were around for a while. Ooh. So I was making good money doing that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, like I said, I'm a crypto investor and then I found NFTs. When I got into NFTs, I realized the space, like that it was lacking a lot of like educational value. And there was a lot of people getting burnt and just taken advantage of because people were jumping into the space and didn't know much. So I started like doing educational like spaces and things like that and trying to like give back to communities along with, you know, building different projects, working with them behind the scenes. Um, and that pretty much led me into exactly what we're doing at the coders. Cause now we have a platform where we can get online and we can educate, uh, we can talk about topics. We can talk to founders and share perspectives. So it pretty much just led right into it. Um, and like I said, content creation to me is just something I've always done because from music into gaming and streaming and all that stuff, it's just natural for me to, to, to create any kind of content. Yeah. Yeah, I love I've loved making content, you know. I've and I've made content, even if it was you know making fake videos, making fake videos when I was you know a little kid. Man, it's just always been fun to me. You say little kid, and you're like, okay. You're that's young. crazy, Jazz. No way, Jazz. That's wild. <laughs> I'm just saying that's you're still crazy. pretty young, bro. That's like crazy. I could be your father. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are you racialing him like that? Yeah, that's no, crazy. no. I love Carter. I'm, I'm, only, I'm not picking wild. on. Him. What wow. I'd like to Carter, say though five. is, wow. No, no. Wait, who's on the coders kick? 
No, I'm just, I'm just, su it's probably Vince. I'm just super impressed that at your age you're doing this. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, like, like at your age, I was like getting in trouble and I didn't care about helping people and spreading anything. So I, I got nothing but love for you, Carter, man. I'm not racist. No, you. Carter, we, guess. yeah, Carter, you're really professional, super mature, but I would like to say kind of sounding like a mom, don't forget to have fun. It's not all about this, because believe me, being an adult, not that fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you did sound like a mom there, I'm going to be honest, VPIF, but... It's all right. No, I've been told that, like, so many times in the last energy. week. It's so funny. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But I get it. I also get it, because I've always I've always hustled since, I, I mean, I've been in the yeah. film industry since I was 15, so I, I do get it, but, like, now that I'm... As old as I am, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't want to have some fun. Yeah, I agree with, I think it's Vince, but I agree. Uh, content creation is fun. That is my fun. I love content creation. But. It is. Okay. Where do you see Web3 content in the future? Where, like, do you think it's going to be one of the outstanding and, like, most recommended on YouTube? You, you know what I mean? Like. Do you think it's going to get really big again, just like the bull market? Or do you think it's just going to be, you know, always like the underdog and it's not going to be as big as like gaming content or no. stuff like that? Um, did you want to take that or should I? No, go ahead. Seems like you're already um, have a thought. Yeah, I mean, it's all speculation, right? But I, I kind of see... Um, Web3 content becoming more than just Web3 content. It, it, it springs out of Web3 content, but with the brands coming to Web3 and, you know, all different um, companies and verticals coming um, to, to Web3 and using the blockchain, I kind of see it, it's going to be more of, yes, it's Web3 content, but Web3 content is going to contain, contain so much more. There's going to be, you know, for example, one of the things that's already been posed is that uh, the blockchain is going to be used for verifying the authenticity of sneakers. So suddenly Web3 content can be for sweet sneaker heads. Like, really, there are some NFT sneaker projects. I don't know if they're still going. I encountered a few of them and I nearly got into a few of them. But, you know, I think that Web3 content is going to become mainstream content at a certain point. So we're super early in that we're already you know, setting the foundation for Web3 content. But I, I do think that it's really going to become the mainstream and what everybody's calling content or, or revering as content in the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure bad environmental, is it, how do you say it? Bad, bad environment? Bad yeah, environment. bad environment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're doing something with, uh, NFTs to yeah they're doing streetwear um yeah. that's part of their project yeah Schaefer and Light are actually super cool we're gonna drop this little out um, I have Schaefer on not this Tuesday but next Tuesday he's coming on so that's a little bit alpha oh that's fire he's I love Schaefer amazing yeah he's, a he's really good both guy. of them are uh, Light really and Schaefer we've had them on decoders and I hang out in the bad environment uh VC with them quite a bit and Schaefer's amazing really incredible yeah yeah they're both really cool I've hung out in VC with them for a long time now and I just got in the discord like a couple of weeks ago so yeah. really cool guys also I'm excited for their like PFP man it looks really cool yeah I haven't kept up because I've been a little busy with Armin but yeah. I mean I, I own a golden pill so I, I have to hit up Schaefer and Light <laughs> to tell me what I'm doing next yeah. at some point. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can tell you. I, I need to learn too, but it's okay. okay. We, we can learn well, together. We hook can me learn up. Together. Yeah, hook me up with the alpha when you find out. <laughs> um. Okay. So, what's your favorite thing about being like a founder so far? I mean, for me, it's just building. Uh, community and just being able to like really have good control wherever like that aspect of it because to me community is a big thing um, so that's one thing I mean we all have our own parts you know what I mean like uh, our team works together in such ways that like we all focus on our own thing like and then we help each other 
but each one of us has like our own main focus where the other ones are supporting them. So, you know, mostly for me, community is what I, I focus on and um, just making sure everything's safe and everybody's doing right. And uh, I just love building and I love building that community. That's why, uh, you know, post men, I'm excited. Like I get to actually see the real community start. Because, you know, once you get past the mint, you get rid of all the grifters and the, you know, whitelist chasers, and that actual community starts to build, and you actually get to know the people in the community a little better, and those people in the community become part of the project, because as I always say, once we mint out, the project's just as much the holders now as it is ours, because now they own it, you know, they're the holders, so, you know, now they're sharing their vision and their, their, you know, perspective, and it's going to help guide us and make sure that we're making the right decisions. Um, so being a founder to me is just mostly, you know, just being able to uh, lay out my vision, have a team that supports it and being able to work with that team and then build something that's pretty cool and positive in the space. Yeah. Yeah. Deepa, if you want to take that one as well. Sure. Um, my favorite part is having the queen role in the discord. Um, <laughs> Just kidding, um, but it is it, it is a cool perk. Um, uh, I mean, same. Like we're 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 there are five of us, five of us, six of us. There's six of us, including the artist Soro, and we all kind of have our own roles. But like we lock together like puzzle pieces, right? So um, it. One of the best parts is just being a part of this team because it's an awesome team to be a part of. Um, the second part is I really, um, well, obviously I get to co host and co-host, which is dope. But what I really, really enjoy is going out on, going out into the community, like the ecosystem as a whole, and like networking with people and finding out things that. They, like, you know, the other night I just kind of went into a space and asked, like, who would you like to see interviewed? You know, just doing things like that as well as networking um, and bringing people to the channel for interviews. Um, you know, putting together my creator roundtables that you were a part of. That's super fun. Just things like that really light me up. Um, you know, hanging out in spaces, learning from people, finding out what they're up to finding out how that can help our project and how our project can help them, bringing them on for interviews, like that whole thing is, yeah, that's my bag. Yeah, I love that. I feel like the right answer would have been working with Vince, but hey, that's fine, that's fine. Um, mm, yeah, cool. <laughs> Vince is the No, goat. of course. He's the no, goat. Of that guy. That guy builds shit. <laughs> and he builds really cool shit <laughs> and he does it very well. So, I mean, uh, without Vince, you know, the project wouldn't, wouldn't be yeah, able to be exist. Nowhere. Yeah. We we're great minds and we're good at things, but we can't build shit like Vince can. Yeah, we also can't sure. break it like he can either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Break it to rebuild it. <laughs> it's all right though. You got to test shit out. You got to tweak it. And like I said, we've been experimenting like pre mint. It's been a, it's been a great experiment. Um, we have so much, um, knowledge, uh, how the player now needs to work and works. Um, and Vince has found a lot of different things to optimize and to fix. And like right now he's pushing in, uh, some, well, he's on here watching, but he should be, uh, in the basement. Uh, he's working okay. on op to optimize the transactions. So they go out a lot faster to people. So as soon as he's done, he's going to add some tokens and anybody listening, your tokens are going to come flying your way. W also shout out foam for being the hundredth, uh, follower. On kick. Hey, burr, 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 um, burr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that was favorite. Now, gonna switch it up a little bit and say, what's the hardest thing about being a founder so far? The 180, you know? Um, for me, it's, I guess, the, the non. No, I mean, that's that's just part of the project. That'll be gone. I think for me, it's just the, uh, the additive, um, like you don't get a day off. You really don't. Um, as, as somebody that's in charge of a project, um, it's hard to take time off. It's hard to like put the phone down. If I'm away from my PC, it's hard to really focus on things in my real life, uh, and not be worried about the project or things going on in the discord or checking in. Um, so I think that, I mean, that's the only disadvantage to being a founder and being somebody in charge of a project is you're pretty much 24 seven. 
Um, but, you know, we knew that coming into this. We knew the responsibility. So, I mean, it doesn't upset me, but I think that's the only con that I really have is the fact that I'm always working on something with the project. Um, and you can't really just take a day off and forget about life, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you could be a mod in a project and just be like, hey, guys, I'm taking tomorrow off. And, and nobody's going to give a shit because, you know, there's other mods. <laughs> but as a project founder, you know, it's really hard for, like, the core team to really take time off because um, we really got to be there and we got to make sure everything's in place and things are going smooth. So, but I mean, I love it. I wouldn't have signed up for it if I didn't enjoy being busy and working on stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. v -Pip? Um, That is definitely um, probably the main. I mean, I think it's a little bit easier for me to break away, not really take time off because I'm always working on something. But like, I remember when we we did the zero soul announcement i was supposed to be on a break and i was like literally phone on the beach like texting this person calling that person trying to set up an interview with that person but you know it, it it's it's thrilling at the same time um the other thing i guess is i mean it just happens it's um you know you're always going to hear that you're a rug somewhere along the line. I, oh, yeah. I find it funny most of the time, but every once in a while it will be somebody that I know. And like, okay. that's disappointing. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really take that personally either because it is what it is, but um, it is disappointing. And like, you know, to have to really think like, is this person somebody that I want to continue on my journey with that's you know yeah that you can that you even have to have that thought is disappointing yeah <clears throat> vince i agree zero soul mint probably a rug probably yeah yeah we actually had people call us a rug and i'm just like okay how's that work yeah i mean some people that's just their knee-jerk reaction so yeah it's I just mean, farming and, engagement yeah they just want, they just want they just that's want just attention. that's just what that's just it. But, you know, some people it was like, oh, man, that that makes me sad. A little sad. But it didn't keep me up at night. Yeah. I would not let that keep me up, you know. Hey, just don't don't mint then, you know. Don't mint and yeah, see what exactly. happens. Yeah, See what happens. Yeah. Um, okay. So, on your, on your limited free time, what kind of content do you guys watch if any i'm mostly uh on youtube watching like music um mostly uh mostly like uh you know i have my own like things that i'm into so i just like yeah. groove out to like some funk and some like good covers do you like house cool music i love house music Nah, oh not so God. much, man. I'm a I'm a real musician. Does he man. look like he likes house music? No, I could see him. I could see him getting lit. That doesn't listen. look like his bag. There was at a, there all. was a there was a time like in my <laughs> there was a time in my life where I was big into like drum and bass and all that stuff. But I mean, I was talking. Oh my God, I love. Drum I'm talking bass, like though. like house, long no. time ago. Yeah. Drum and bass and grime, wow. absolutely. But house, not yeah. my bag. I mean, mostly I'm on YouTube and I'm just like chilling, you know, grooving out to some stuff while I'm like doing other things on my computer or, you know, I'll be uh, just have a spaces on in the background, listen to some people chat, you know, if I can get in on it, I will. But yeah, that's Vin pretty much it. Vince said you're a you're a country cowboy, dude. <laughs> hey, I've written. Listen. Uh, I've written a lot of country songs. Not to say I'm a country fan, but I used to write where the money was. And when you, you, hey, you hired that. me to come in the studio, hey, you hired me to come in the studio. And you said, "This is a Christian artist. We need some songs. This is a country artist. We need some songs." I'm gonna write a country song that day. I'm gonna write a Christian song that day because I, I was getting paid get to do it. Don't even worry. <laughs> hey, I get it, bro. I get it. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But you know, it's all the same. Genre means nothing in music. It's yeah. just lyrics and melodies and just, you know, it all depends on the accompanying instruments you put with it that make it sound country. Depends or, you know, it. switch your word. Yeah. Yeah. V? You, you watch any content? What to, uh, yeah, yeah. I watch a lot of, um, astrology. Oh, um, <laughs> I do. I watch a lot of astrology content. Um. I used to watch a. I used to be addicted to unboxing videos, okay, but I, I don't do in. that I anymore. Can, I can rock with yeah. some unboxing, unboxing videos. Unboxing videos, 
are, yeah, that used to be, like, I'd just have them on, like, a loop Wait, at so, one stage. So do you know, like, all the astrology signs and stuff like that? I do. I do. And oh, yeah. I, I get it. Okay. I do. Hey, we all have our own <laughs> little thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, judge. you know, and, you, hey. Yeah, well, um, uh, what else? What else do I watch in content? Like, I do actually just watch television. Man, <laughs> I know that's boomer, kind of uh, uh, boomer. that's kind of a washed <laughs> reference, but I do like fictional television. Um, uh, watch some docu. Oh, you know what I do watch on YouTube a lot? What? I watch a lot of stand up. Yep, that's like, probably oh, yes. the top thing I, I love watch. That. Like Matt Rife and yes. um, someone Matt, just gave I love me Matt so much. Reaper just sent me somebody else that was pretty funny. I can't remember his name now. Um, I'm I'm a huge Tom Segura fan, so I watch all of his little clips that aren't, you know, not aren't his Netflix um, <laughs> stuff. But of, I'll just watch. I'll watch anyone. You remind me of someone that would watch the show Grey's Anatomy. I used to work on the show Grey's Anatomy Actually, at one stage. I didn't. Yeah. Hey, that's that's pretty sick, actually. Yeah, but I did I did watch it up until like very recently. It just got too dumb. Yeah, my mom loves that yeah. show. Um, yeah. Me, the only show. I'm <laughs> not the only show, but the one show I love, The Office. Love The Office. Um, I worked on the first season of The Office as well. That's pretty crazy. What the heck? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Beefy, why am I just learning this? Um. Hmm. What else? I love documentaries. Yeah. Love documentaries. Did you watch the Obama one on Netflix? No, I really enjoyed no, no, no. that one. No, I and I got that. uh Vittler to watch it as well. He got hooked on that. Hmm. I just watched the Conor McGregor one. I really like that. That was a good one. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, okay. So what has kept you guys going through the bear market? Um, well, apart from decoders, um, yeah, 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 like and my space. Like um, mo I mean, motivation was like, look, you just have to pivot, right? Yeah. Like, the people who are still here have learned to pivot and learned to like ride the different waves that we've had. But um, what keeps me going? Well, I mean, it's 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 not my full hustle is one one thing. Um, I still have an IRL job. I'm not I'm not doing it at the moment, but I still have an IRL job. Um, it's not my full hustle. Um, I do do a lot of work outside my IRL job when I'm there um, here. So it's like having two jobs. But um, I mean, you know, I'm I came from an investment background. So I know that this, these cycles exist, not just in not they're not just crypto cycles, they're investment yeah. cycles. So, yeah. you know, a, as somebody who came in. As an investor, I'm a lot less emotional than a lot of people in the space, and um, and I really just have been listening for the opportunities um, existing in the space instead of like being down bad, you know. Yeah. Which actually, that's one of the things with uh, my space is like it's called Solana Side Up because everybody was so down bad, and I was like, I'm just tired of hearing all of this down bad sentiment let's have some fun you know yeah i'm laughing over here because because vince in my dms he's like you told me to code shit i'm leaving <laughs> <laughs> we love you vince, <laughs> we love vince. <laughs> that's why i was getting going it's nothing that v, v was saying just so you know <laughs> my my discord alerts come up on the bottom corner of my one monitor so i see them in my inbox when they're yeah the i game. love i love when i'm like gaming and he I told us he was coding up. he told us he was coding he and wasn't he's been gonna watching, be here he's been supporting and i guess you know Good i did tell him to go code a little bit but it's because only because people keep tagging me in general chat saying when 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 so <laughs> need them to get that update out so we can just like sit back for 12 hours and not be tagged in general chat he, he's he's the reason that you're still in web3 right he's pushed you through this bear market right um <laughs> he's kept you here. i see you bro i see you as soon as i said it when should have a bot response to that i think that uh risha plans yeah, I mean, the, uh, why I'm still in Web3, is that kind of like what the question is right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I'm here just because I fell in love with Solana community. Um, honestly, I just, I was a, an investor. I came in and I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll work with NFTs now since I don't, you know, I can't, I can't buy any crypto right now. We're coming out of a bull cycle. Um, so I brought some money over from my wins and I, I invested in Solana. And, you know, of course, we all start out, we got rugged, we found, and then we find a good community, found that community, um, became home. And I really like kind of fell in love with just the, the friendships and the community vibes and all that stuff. Cause when I got in, we were still a, a positive uh, community space. It wasn't as toxic as it's been like the last six months mm -hmm. to a year. It was, you know, everybody's gonna make it. We're all here together, let's go, let's get together. You know, everybody was like vibing. Um, no matter what, even if the project rugged, we'd find each other in another community, be like, yo, what's up? You know, and we wouldn't even care, you know, blah, 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 yeah. but those were, yeah, I mean, that's how it was. But, um, what keeps me here is that community vibe. Um, I'm actually not much invested in NFTs right now. Um, I've sold most of mine for profits because we're in a bear market in crypto and that's my focus. That was always my focus. So I took all my profits out of like a lot of my NFTs that I was holding the last year sold most of them to get back into my crypto um, portfolio. Um, but I love building and I love being part of the communities and I love being in the space. And I think Web 3's future is just like what Web 2's future was back in the day before, you know, the dot com bubble and all that. So I feel like being a part of that and being early, um, it's something it's a place I really want to be, even though I don't, you know, I don't need to make money in Web 3, uh, you know, I, but I just like to be here and support people and just give back and just, you know, try to build some cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I feel like the reason I'm still in Web3 is just the opportunities, the people that I've met, you know? <clears throat> yeah. You can meet a lot of people in the right community, man. Oh, yeah. And just network out. Yeah. I feel like there's just I mean, the coders, we all met in one community. That's how we all met. The founders, you know, we all met in one community. It's crazy. And we all worked together in that community and that's, that's what brought us to the coders what sparked it love it okay so what is one thing that you think is needed to make good content what do you think is makes it interesting or makes it stand out to people you want me to take that big yeah you can because i'm still thinking about it so for me i think it's the person's being authentic and they're constantly just putting material out there, whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. and they're continuing to try. I think I, I think that's the best thing for any a creator out there to uh, to be authentic. If it's authentic, I can vibe with it because I feel it. You know what I mean? I know it's not just made up. I know they didn't read it from somebody else. So to me, I just think that's one of the most important parts of content that I think matters for anybody. Doesn't matter if you're if it hits or not. Just that if it's authentic and people can feel that it's real from you. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm still working on that myself is just trying to put more out there, you know, and just, I mean, I'm learning that it doesn't always have to be perfect because if it's always perfect, there's nowhere to go, you know, there's nowhere to get better. Woo, little voice crack, crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just, try I'm going to, I'm going to be putting out a lot more content now and it's just, I'm sure it might not be as good, which I never really thought it was perfect, but Let's see where it goes. Uh, v, do you have an answer? Um, yeah, I mean, to Jazz's point, absolutely. Um, I was talking about this a lot this week where it's like you have to be yourself and you have to, and that has to be enough. That has to be good enough and that yeah. has to be enough because trying to be someone else, well, that's exhausting. And people are going to gravitate to you, mm -hmm. honestly. Like, um, and those are the people that you want gravitating to you. Of course, we all want 10,000 followers. Well, whatever. We all want, you know, we all want big numbers. We all want monetization numbers or whatever. But if you're not being yourself, it, the burnout rate is much, much faster yeah. in, my, in my experience. The other thing is like, you know, at one stage, it was getting really dead with my space and I was like, what am I going to do? I have to kind of come up with a format, like a, a more serious format or something. And that's just, that wasn't me. That wasn't my space. That wasn't the vibe. So, you know, I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to cut it down and, you know, only do it two days a week instead of 
the six or the five that I was doing before because there's not enough material to talk about and I don't want to sacrifice um, you know what I have going here to change my space or become something else and I'm I'm not talking about not evolving I'm not staying in one place I'm always trying new things within the space within the uh, content we're creating on YouTube, all of that stuff. I'm always thinking up new ideas and new angles for it, but I'm saying you've always got to be you. And then the only other thing I would say on this is like, uh, being consistent pays dividends. Um, it's not exactly answering your question, but I've also been talking about this a lot this week. Being consistent pays dividends mm. because I, as I said at the beginning, Jazz will tell you I'm the most unlikely Spaces host, but I am a Spaces host now, and I just celebrated a year, so I'm over a year doing that. Solana Side Up now. Congrats. Yeah, and the people that I started with, the people that I used to co-host with, the people that I looked up to, they don't do their Spaces anymore, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I'm, this is no shade, this is no judgment or whatever. It's just, you know, life, life took different turns for them and but you know I if you had told me a year ago that I'd still be here and they wouldn't like I would never never in a million years take that bet yeah for sure um shoot I had something and then I lost it oh being uh -oh. yourself being yourself, being yourself um yeah I feel like I feel like we've seen this a lot on Twitter and it's just these fake people that just go for FUD and stuff like that. Not gonna name names, but there's one guy that really comes to mind. I feel like he's just been burnt out. Like, you know, you can't be fake forever. And you just don't, it's not fun then. You're not yourself. You feel like you have to be someone else to be liked and stuff like that. So yeah. just, it's never good. It's never good. Yeah. I also think, sorry to interrupt, but mm -hmm. I also think. Uh, something that you said um, resonated with me. Mm -hmm. I also think that you have to have a life outside of Twitter and Kick and uh, YouTube and uh, uh, what are we on Twitch? Yeah. You know, because there are certain people in the space, and I won't name their names either, who they have to be on Twitter every day because mm -hmm. that's their money maker. Like so, life outside of Twitter doesn't exist, and like life out of, out, outside of Twitter is interesting. Like, you bring more to the table with life outside of all of these gadgets that we surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I do think that being well-rounded helps you with your, you know, going out and even if it's just going out and taking a walk, yeah. um, you know, and, and experiencing life, that makes you a stronger and better content creator. Yeah, I, I love... I've, <laughs> I used to spend way too much time, way too much time inside. And We've, we're all guilty yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. And when you learn that going outside and, I mean, even just, you know, sitting outside for a little bit and just breathing in the air, it just makes you feel a lot better. And yeah, it's great because out, like, outside in the sky and everything, it's, like, just a canvas, like, a, like an art canvas. That yeah, is there's inspiration changing. to be gotten from it, it's for amazing. sure. Okay, so back to more decoder the decoder side what is the utility for decoders after mint um so there's going to be a lot of different utilities um most of it's going to be uh revolving around our token uh, the views token um, but as a holder you'll be able to earn uh, the views token just like we've been allowing people pre-mint um, it's going to be based off of the amount of nfts that you hold so the more that you hold, the higher your yield will be. Um, and then Views token itself will be used for a, an array of things, you know, from trade swapping um, to uh, paying for a, a sponsored show uh, with us. So, we'll, you know, make uh, people that want to do a show with us that instead of paying the fee in USD, they'll have to buy mm -hmm. the views to put a little pressure on the views. Um, we're going to be minting future batches of our uh, collection with views again, uh, just like we're minting the first batch here uh, in a couple of days. Um, and in the future, uh, as soon as we stabilize the token after this, you know, mint probably closer to the second batch, we're going to launch an LP as well uh, for the token. 
Um, so that's some of the utility based around the token. Um, you know, you as a holder, of course, you have uh, the ability to participate in a lot of the things that we're going to be doing with our shows. We also are going to have different kinds of revenue coming in from the white label app itself, which is the player. Um, ad affiliates, um, advertising, just different things from YouTube side. And all that money, of course, will be put back into development, uh, into the, uh, the project itself. Um, I'm not sure, V, am I missing anything here? You spoke about booster packs, right? Well, the, yes, that, that I did miss that. But booster packs okay. would be something else uh, that will be coming out uh, to add on the token utility where people will be able to buy custom booster packs to uh, upgrade their NFT. Um, and they'll only be adoring live shows with particular people. Like we have Carter on, we could do like a special booster pack of like some Carter stuff, you know, something cool. Some baby know, that toys. Relates to him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we take yeah. the bubble gum. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Carter He's bubble like gum. Some baby yeah. toys, nah, man. Listen, I, I a rattle. I wish I'd yes. done half of the stuff that you've done <laughs> by this age, by the time I was your age, because I'd be even more successful and comfortable in life if i was as advanced as you are at your age so yeah i got again man i'm, I'm always impressed by you carter like <laughs> literally like you do so much at your age it's crazy to me I love it. I love it. Um, yeah but as for utility i think that's pretty much uh what we have in the works we're also you know going to be doing some other things that uh we haven't quite announced you know there's things that we're going to be always releasing and launching and coming out with um, and Vince is in the chat. If I missed anything, he can type it out in yeah, the chat. He or said, he can "Yell at us later." Views he didn't alpha. leave. <laughs> yeah, he said yeah. views is alpha, and then he said pudgy penguins toys, which is actually smart because that could be like a pudgy <laughs> penguins x Carter x decoders. Boom, crazy. You can have a Carter plush toy or something. Only yeah. five <laughs> of them available. You only yeah. get them during a live stream. My goodness, Cost that, X amount of views. That'd but yeah, so our, our, our NFT. <laughs> And our NFT, when we mint it, it's going to have no rarity. So that's why the trait's going to be important because the the way you're going to add value to your NFT and the rarity is going to be customizing. Um, and, you know, if you get a rare 101 trait that's in a booster pack, you're going to only have that trait. So it's going to mm -hmm. put value if somebody else wants it. <clears throat> you know, the, there always has to be a buyer for every seller. And if there's buyers out there that want it, then you can get more money for it. That's just basic, you know, yeah. <laughs> basic buy, sell. Yeah, for sure. Um, does decode, obviously decoders has partners. Um, who are some decoders partners? Asset dash is our first like, I partner. Dash. Yeah. We love asset dash too. And, um, yeah, Matt and Vittler are really cute together. Um, so we love some asset dash, um, uh, who we have affiliates like with ledger and whatever. Um, What's another partnership? I mean, our white label partners, we have the Bell Studios, Mark Colser. Do we have another one now? Um, Am I missing pretty somewhere? much uh, with uh, Non Fungible Wear is one of our partners for our merch. Oh, yeah. Non Fungible is our, cool. our merch partner. And we're pretty much partnered up with Helio Pay. Um, they're going to be doing our VIP mint, um, and yeah. we've done some cool stuff with them. Famous um, Fox. And, you know, yeah, and we have some great support from communities like yeah, the Gods, Famous Foxes, Blocksmith Labs. Hey, yo, um, Soul you know, Sniper is coming soon, too. That's pretty sick. I love them. Yeah, we've had some great support from communities, but as partner-wise, like I said, Acid Dash, Helio Pay, and, um, and um, uh, Non-Fungible, where we'd probably be our, you know, close to being actual yeah. partners, in a sense. Um, and we do have, like you said, affiliates that we have during our shows. We can, you want to buy a ledger, mm -hmm. you get affiliate link from us and that kind of stuff. But sick, sick. Typical mm -hmm. YouTube content creation mm -hmm. stuff. You need those affiliates. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Brody. We do love Bell Studios. We do love Bell Studios. Yes, we uh, have a player for Jakey. If you guys want to earn some views, you can watch Jakey and his chaos and do some stuff on the Bell Studios platform. We love Jakey too. Jakey's is such a cool guy. Um, <clears throat> Going into that, how does someone get their content on the player? Like, the, yeah, the player. Um, now, okay. So, if they want a white label app, they would open a ticket in our server. But if you're talking about wanting to be on the channel, um, we do sponsored spaces. We did our first two during the marathon. That again is um, a case of coming into our Discord and, and filling out a Google form. 
Um, but am I missing anything with that? No, those are the two two options. If you want a player that's a Vittler thing and you talk, hash that out with him. And if you wanted a sponsored space, you fill out the form and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Sick, sick. Well, that's all I have. Uh, actually, you want to run over a little bit of the mint details, when it is, price, stuff like that, to, you know, end us off? Sure. Um, price is 1,440 1, views. Um, VIP uh, whitelist is October 2nd, and then the tiers go down from then there. Main mint is on October 3rd on Magic Eden. Um, what do we start with? VIP OGs? Is OG the start of Magic Eden Mint? Um, actually, it's going to start with the uh, YouTube creators, I believe. Uh, oh, YouTube creators. Yes. And fans. Yes, yes. Um, there are a lot of different tiers. Um, so, yeah, we'll start doing the main, and then we'll go all the way down to public. Um, whether we'll actually get to public is another question, but because um, we're pretty popular right now, it would seem. But, Crazy yeah. Flex. We ha <laughs> well, we're, we're over-allocated like most mints, but the thing is yeah, you need to have so. views. If you don't have views, yeah. you can't mint. So you can't just show up with your whitelist on mint day and be like, ha, I haven't been active in the community at all, and I, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just going to show up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, but um, yeah. so the mint schedule we have is YouTube fans and the donors will mint on October 2nd. Um, I'm going to be talking in Eastern time, um, yeah. 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, that's going to be on Magic Eden along with the friends and content creators, which will come at 3.10 p.m. Eastern, which is an hour later. Um, and UTC time, you're looking at 6 p.m. and 7.10 p.m. Um, and then our OG partners will mint October 3rd and next day at 12 p.m. Eastern or 4 p.m. Um, uh, UTC, followed by our subscriber mint and all the clad mints in the public, uh, which will follow soon after. It's on Magic Eden. You guys can go on the launch pad and you can yeah. see the, the countdown for everything. Uh, yeah. Also, just make sure you realize that um, we're also doing a 24-hour stream during the whole thing. So we're going to be live on the channel with all guests all these kinds of crazy guests coming back in new people it's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun it's just gonna be straight yeah. great content for 24 hours just make sure you keep it on in yeah. the background farm some views hang out with us come into the chats um, yeah. but it's we've gonna be had, exciting man yeah we have somebody that i've been trying to get forever so very excited about that although, i'm not although, gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna no, release the alpha no, the question is, the only thing I want to know is, are they going to be doxxed or are they going to be a PFP? <laughs> he's he's fully doxxed already, so he should be doxxed. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just Unless... saying I don't know either if they're going to come on and uh, be uh, and they're going to be actually on camera I mean... or they're just going to be the PFP. No, yeah, I, saw, I, don't think... I saw it on the schedule, I think... so I know who you're talking about. I don't, I, I don't think he's going to be his PFP, but who knows? Like, oh, also, he doesn't have a great track record of showing up for me, so... But I kind of... I'm... No, it sounds like Carlos. <laughs> no, Carlos no, will, no, 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 Carlos, Carlos will be is, on the show, though, Carlos guys. Carlos is solid. Carlos, Carlos will be there. Carlos will be on the show. Yeah, um, no. He is, he is confirmed to come back yeah, to hang no. out with us. Carlos was but, one of I our mean... early shows. He's coming back to show some love, yeah. going in the mint. Nothing but love for Carlos. Yeah, I've I've I have confirmed this person and I've locked them in and he does know that he will get it on the timeline because he gets it anyways on the timeline for me. So I think that uh, it's pretty, pretty solid unless something unforeseen happens that he will be there. Yeah, we have we have some solid founders coming on the show to support us. They've been with us since day one, and they're coming back for Mint, um, which shows much. I mean, I got nothing but gratitude for them because you know, the, as founders, you know it's busy, and yeah. they got a lot going on. They're taking the time to come back, and I mean, there's one founder I think is coming back on a few times during the marathon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw him a few times on the schedule, um, and it's one of these favorite people. So. I think she'll Who's be excited it? about that. Who's, oh, Drax. Yeah. Must be yes. Drax. I love Drax. Well, he's such a good guy. I, I saw him I've a couple times. I've never met him. I've never met him. I saw him a couple him. times been... on the schedule. He's coming in for okay. like an hour by himself, and he's coming in later with uh, with uh, the legend from BSL, and Drax oh. going to be together. 
Oh, nice. Go. Yeah, no, I'll be there for all the Drax, the Drax It's going to be exciting, guys. No Make sure what. you tune in. Definitely tune in. Uh, well, yeah, I'm fun. not sure. Vince, Vince can confirm. I'm not sure when we're going to release the actual schedule of who's on what time slot. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe Monday, you know, right leading into it. I don't know for sure. Hey, can I just say one thing, Carter, that I think is worth um, rebroadcasting here? Um, we are minting on the second and the third. There's also um, some people got Dutch auction from Acid Dash, so that will be airdropped. The art reveal will come later, though. It's not going to be instant. Okay. Just so, just so we're all clear. Sick. Yeah. Because that's something that people love to fight about after. <laughs> yeah, Vince has said that uh, prior to Breakpoint is his timeline, and Breakpoint's yeah. the end of October, correct? Yeah, yeah, so, we're yeah, we're gonna be there from the 29th, so yeah, it has so, to be wrapped up by like around the 25th. And knowing how Vince works, as soon as we get post mint, he is gonna be in the basement getting all the layering correct and oh, all yeah, the artwork together, that. and he's gonna work his ass off and probably have the art out before we know it. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't yeah. like to set timelines. The only timeline yeah. we have is before breakpoint. Um, so just bear with us. Drax not Drax canceled for the second show. I think. I think that's what he. Oh, said. Okay. But he's then, still as long as he's there that. once. Then he also he's said that he, they're, oh, man, you're gonna release the schedule once everything is locked in. Got it. Got yeah, it. we will. Yes, yes. So, so watch out for that on Twitter, guys. everyone. Watch out in the Discord. Watch out on Twitter. Go buy your views. Get ready for mint. Man, get, we're getting close. Get, get your get your get your energy drinks ready. Get your yeah. coffee Carter, ready. You got enough views for your mints? Uh, I yeah. have I have enough for one, and I'm gonna. Uh, All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to send you um I'm going to send you enough for another one out of my personal views. Yeah, I appreciate that, um, bro. Uh, as a thank you for having us on your show and, you know, Absolutely. constantly providing good content in the space and uh maybe uh maybe I'll have you on one of my uh, deep dive episodes here in the future as well. I know you were just on the you show, should. so I don't want to saturate should. the show with you. But I mean, we can come in and we can talk ever, about your little journey. Is there ever enough Carter? Let's be real. Come on now. I mean, Come on. I don't Come like to have now. the same guest on close to one. Like, this <laughs> yeah, no. Well, we, maybe in like December because we, he just did his content creator roundtable. Yeah, we'll get you on. We'll get you on for a, for a, a for deep sure. dive for sure. Nah, so hey, and then my camera looks really. Carter. It looks really good because then I have the Christmas tree in the back. It looks really cool in December and November actually. Nice. It looks really oh, cool. I'll, I'll yeah. turn my lights it's green really then. I'll do green yeah. and red behind me for Christmas. Yeah. Hey. You know, I'll do green on one side, red on the other. I got yes, this. Love that. I got this. Love that. I could get one of those, like you know, one of those little, <clears throat> little projection lights that that do the it, like the, the little swirly ball light. That goes, like yeah, yes, yeah, it's like yes. a yeah, but it does the green and red for whatever, <laughs> whatever hotel room, uh, <laughs> living room I'm in at the time. <laughs> Boom. Mint starts October second for some some rolls and then october 3rd for public you can always go back when on youtube um when we drop this probably ten, later tonight um and that's all i got if anyone else has any questions drop them in the in the chat um and if not thank you guys for coming on thank you for having us thank you so much for asking it was a pleasure to be here Sorry, but they're good. what yeah, I, I'm just laughing at the general chat. Someone just said, who do I have to suck to get a claim roll round? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> These people want their views, man. They got to get their views. That's something That's something Foam would say. Said, what what's do I have to suck? Okay. <laughs> um, OG no, is awkward. not guaranteed mint, correct? Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is no, guaranteed. it's all FCFs. Yes, nothing is guaranteed. Even our VIPs have to get there on time and get wild. their mints in because there's only a certain amount of uh mints for them and there's plenty more in the allotments so uh, of whitelist allocation for them so um <laughs> I'm not did you see 14, that too 14, 14, 14 <laughs> <years>. <laughs> i mean crazy. i appreciate i appreciate the 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 the, the like the fact that you guys want the views that bad, that just shows me that you guys are bullish and I like that. So um, I got nothing but love for everybody in the community, all the support we've had from all the all the communities, especially the Jelly family. You guys have been a big support for us. Um, so I got a lot of love for you guys. Of course, D Gods, Blocksmith Labs, uh, Famous Fox, you guys all, the, all those communities have been like our backbone. So 
much love to those guys. And Carter, thank you so much for uh, taking time and, uh, you know, having us on your show. Of course, bro. Thanks for, thank you know, you. giving me you guys' this time, your guys' this time. Holy cow, the grammar isn't going. It's not grammaring today, but. The grammar is not grammaring. Yeah, so I appreciate it's you guys fun. coming on. I think that's going to end it. <laughs> Guys, go get your views ready. They're on FFF. Go, go buy them. They're actually pretty cheap. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're at rock bottom so. prices right now. So yeah, yeah. sweep it. Go on the go you on the player. A, you get, might be I able to get like under night. one soul, one mint. I mean, I think that's gonna yeah. be good when you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, so yeah, get ready, get ready for the twenty four hour stream, and yeah, just. Minute, make sure you guys follow right. Carter on Kick or Twitch wherever you're watching. Give yeah. him a follow. He's, he's doing links, good stuff. Coder's links will be down in the description as well if you're watching on YouTube. And thanks for sticking around.